Hey guys, Anthony here for D News. I have Esther Ingalls Arkell with me from io9. Thanks for coming out. And we are at Booksmith on Haight Street in San Francisco. And Esther, you've picked six of the best science books of the year. The first one, which will probably be uh, on the minds of many people when they're with families for extended periods of time is Hallucinations by Oliver Sacks. Okay. This is the guy who wrote Awakenings and uh, the man who mistook his wife for a hat. He's a neuroscientist. And okay. He's, so he really knows what he's talking about. And he's talking about hallucinations, you know, his own drug-filled hallucinations, neuroscience. That's okay. Great. And uh, like the, the hallucinations that come up when people go blind, they often have hallucinations, like incredibly detailed one. This is the book to get if it's like 15 minutes before bed and you read. Okay. Because people are like, oh, I hate dreams. Like people tell you their dreams, it's boring. But yeah. I think one dream is good, but like 20 dreams in a row, not so good. Absolutely. I get what you're saying. Okay, the next one is Zubiquity. Okay. It's about how humans and animals get the same diseases. It has stuff like how to put a grizzly bear on a diet because as it turns out, grizzly bears and other animals get eating disorders. So like, how do you cure something that's stress eating or like starving itself? I like things that talk about the similarity between people and animals and how much closer we are than we really think <laughs> yeah. we are, you know? And so it's kind of interesting to me that like, an animal could have an eating disorder. Yeah. Could have the presence of mind to have that sort of mentally yeah, caused. Yeah, and, and how do you like get, how do you like, get a diet journal for something that has four inch claws and can come after you. <laughs> and the answer is they make the grizzly bear a locavore. So those are kind of big idea science books. Yeah. And these, these are kind of broken down to a couple different categories. So what's next? Okay, the next is science history books. And uh, this is to give to your, uh, I guess, most hated creationists or, or maybe just the antidote if they rant at you, you can read this. It's called Darwin's Ghosts. And the history behind this is Darwin obviously published On the Origin of Species, mm -hmm. and he, he took a little heat because people were like, you were not the first guy to come up with this. Right. So he started going back and looking at who to give credit to, and you find all these, all these stories from Aristotle all the way up to Darwin of different evolutionary theorists and people who were just like looking through the fossil record and being like, there seems to be a progression here. Yeah. Well, that's really cool because yeah. I think most people think of Darwin not, maybe not as like the absolute father of evolutionary theory, but as the first guy who really fleshed it out. So it's kind of cool books like this that show you other stuff that came before that maybe you didn't know about. Yeah, and it's anyone who really looked at the record, mm -hmm. kind, the fossil record, kind of came up with this idea that animals grow and change, and he, he really published the perfect book on it. But he got first post, you guys. He did. He got first post, so he gets it. <laughs> Next one is Medusa's Gaze and Vampire's Bite. And that's, this is kind of history, lore, and science. Mm -hmm. And it explores like the vampire myth, the Medusa myth, like something that can turn you to stone by looking at you. Okay. So these are all like the scientific reasons people thought that there were vampires or where vampires came from. That yeah, sort of thing. where the where the vampire legends came from, and it talks about diseases that people have that kind of make them sensitive to sunlight and crave blood. That's not that's not a disease that mimics vampirism. That is vampirism, Esther. <laughs> what you're talking about. If you hate sun and you crave blood, you're just a vampire. But you don't sparkle. So you don't sparkle. No. I guess the last category is math books because okay. who doesn't think I am I am off my head on eggnog? I want to read some math. But this is this is cool though because people don't understand how hard it is to write. I mean, these science books in general to make mm -hmm. them accessible takes a very specific kind of writer that's able to kind of relay these things and break them down. But a math book, I feel like, has to be so much more like that to get me to sit and read a book about math theory. Yeah. You gotta be a good writer, right? I'm so glad you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> By total coincidence. So this is the theory that would not die. It's mm -hmm. uh, how Bayes rule cracked the Enigma code, hunted down Russian submarines, and emerged triumphant from two centuries of controversy. So, I mean, they had to do a lot of explanation in the title. Right. But uh, there's a lot more explanation in here. Bayes rule is an idea that uh, a equation that deals with probability and how likely it is that realistically that certain things will happen given okay. different factors. And it talks about the whole history of Bayes' theorem from 
when it was when people came up with it and how it was used but it doesn't have that much actual you know a b greek letter equals right in it see so, i like that i like i like just give me the concept yeah and let me wrap my head around the concept and so then... you know how it's used how it can be used and what kind of problems people had with it, but gotcha. you don't have to read through the equations, which some mathematical purists object to about the book. So sure. we're gonna make up with that with uh, a book called Measurement. It is not in. It flew off the shelves because it it's a math book. This is a book that starts out with all kinds of equations and explains them bit by bit and with all different uh, areas of math. So it start literally the first page is this is a pretty pattern. Why do you think it's pretty? And it comes through with uh, how the angles work, how the shapes work. Yeah. So this is things like uh, the golden ratio or the rule yeah. of thirds in photography. Yeah. And it kind of links it all to why we find that aesthetically pleasing. Yes. And this is the guy who wrote uh, the Mathematician's Lament, another book that I'm sure just flew <laughs> flew off the shelves. And it's about how like K through 12 math education has a real problem because it kind of crushes the love of math out of people. Agreed. Yeah. 100% <laughs> agreed. So this, this guy was like, I like math, why doesn't everybody? So these, these sound great. You guys, uh, you can pick these up. If you're here in San Francisco, please come pick them up here at the Booksmith on Hate. If not, we will uh, we'll have some links down below to, uh, to wherever you can grab them. Esther, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having me. And uh, you can see more of Esther's stuff on io9.com. And be sure to subscribe here for more D News updates every day. We have so much science, Esther. So much science? So much science to get through. <gasps> and not enough time. Oh. <laughs>